Hello everybody and welcome to this project where we are going to start off with the email attacks. Now email attacks are one of the most important things and parts of social engineering. You can use emails in order to further on extend your attack. For example the backdoor that we coded, we could gather all of the emails from a specific company and send our backdoor to each and every email and hopefully one of those people will open it and therefore we have the access to that company. And that is exactly what we are going to try right now. We are going to create a program that is going to be able to scrape all of the emails from a specific domain name. For example, we want to be able to specify the link to a specific website and our program will gather all of the emails regarding that specific domain. So let's see how we can do that. I already created a project called email attacks because in the future we actually might add a few more programs to this project but for now on this is the main one and trust me this is going to be a good program. You will use it a lot. So it is similar to the harvester program, many of you might know it in case you are an experienced ethical hacker and this program will actually be able to extract even more emails than the harvester. So let's create the program first, we will call it email-scraper.py. We will import the needed libraries, so we are going to need a library that we haven't used before, which is the beautiful soup library. But we don't want to import it like this, we want to import it from beautiful soup for import beautiful soup just like this and you will notice it is red underlined we're going to install it as soon as we import all the needed libraries so let's import the next one which is going to be the requests library and we also need to import requests.exceptions we will need to import url lib.parse we will import from collections import dq now i know most of these libraries are something that we haven't used but it doesn't really matter as we will use them inside of this program. And the last one which we did use before is the regex library, which is RE. So now that we imported all the needed libraries, let us prompt the user for the information that we need in order for our program to run, such as for example the URL. So I will specify a variable called user URL to be equal to input. Now let's prompt to the user enter target URL to scan and we want to convert all of this into a string just in case so it doesn't present us a problem and we will perform a DQ onto this URL so how can we do that well we will specify a variable called URLs to be equal to DQ open up the brackets open up square brackets and specify user URL now before we continue, let us install these needed libraries. Open up your terminal. Let's go with the requests first, so pip3, install requests. It will install the library and let's go with the beautiful soup, so pip3, install bs4. Let's first of all try it like this. Okay, so bs4 is the correct name to use and I believe that's it. If we close this, in just a few seconds we should lose these red lines. Okay, we no longer have any errors, let's continue with our program and let's create a set which is going to be scraped URLs because our program is going to be based on actually scraping all of the URLs from the main page and trying to find the pattern of an email using regex. For every pattern of an email that we manage to find, we're going to save it and then print it at the end of the execution of our program. We also want to create another set which is going to be equal to emails. So we have a set that is going to be scraped URLs and set that is going to be emails. Now we can try to scrape and find the emails. So we can use the try statement. And inside of that try statement we're going to use a while length loop of the URLs. Which remember are a DQ from the user URL. We want to also create a count variable that is going to be equal to zero and which we will increase right at the beginning. So count plus equals one. If we reach the count number to be equal to 100, then we will break out of this program. And what this simply means is we're telling the program that we only want to scrape first 100 URLs. If you leave the program to scrape 1000 URLs, it will scrape 1000 URLs. But that will take too long, that's why we only leave 100 URLs to scrape from the main page. There is really no need to scrape more, 100 is more than enough and after it reaches 100 URLs that it already searched, 
Then it will break out of this while loop and we will print all the emails that we found. Since our URLs are in a DQ, we want to create a variable called URL and we want to use the pop left function onto our URLs. So URLs dot pop left. And we can use that URL and add it to our set. So script URLs dot add. Add is the function that we use to add a certain element to our set. And then we can specify URL inside of the brackets. Okay. So for now on, this is the base part of our program. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can convert our URL and split it into a base part and the path part, and then see how we can create a pattern that is going to try to find emails inside of each and every of those URLs. Okay, so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Bye. Welcome back. Let's continue with our email scraper. So in the previous video, we created the needed variables, we created two different sets, one of them will store scraped URLs and one of them will store emails. Then we told the program that we only want to scrape for first 100 URLs that it finds and now we want to tell the program that all the emails that we find in those 100 URLs we want to save and later on print to the screen. So first thing we need to do is we need to format the URL and how we're going to do that? Well, let's create a variable called parts. That variable will be equal to URL lib dot parse and then URL split from the URL that we have. And keep in mind, this is the URL that we are currently scanning and it will switch every time. That's why we have this count variable right here. We need to define the base URL and here we can define it like this. To open these curly brackets, zero dot shim, two dots, slash slash, which is the regular slash slash in a link. And then open curly brackets once again, zero dot netlock. And just here we need to change this. The closed square bracket should be after shim. So right here, close the square bracket. And then at the end, we want to format this with the parts that we created, which is right here. So we're simply just splitting the URL. That is all that we're doing. And right now let's find the path. So path will be equal to URL. And here we're going to use the lists comprehension, so we're going to do something like this. From the beginning to the URL, dot r find, open the brackets, we're looking for the slash, and then plus one at the end. And then close the square brackets if, open up single quotes once again, add slash in between, in parts, dot path, okay? In any other case, so else, we're going to simply use the URL. After it, we can print that we're processing specified URL. Okay, so percent %d we are going to use in order to print the number of the URL that we're currently scanning. So let's type here processing percent %s for the URL to be fit in there. So percent instead of percent %d, we want to type count. And instead of percent %s, we want to specify the URL. This will simply just print us to the screen which URL are we currently scanning and which number is that URL from 1 to 100. Right after it, we want to try to connect to that URL, so we will simply try requests.get to that specific URL and we will store that inside of our response. Because from that response, we're going to try and find all of the emails. In case that doesn't work, we are going to print some errors, except open brackets, requests dot exceptions dot missing shima. That is the first error that we might encounter. And the second one is requests dot exceptions dot connection error in case we don't manage to connect. In case we don't manage. And in that case, we simply just want to continue. We don't want to stop running our program just because we didn't manage to connect to one URL. We want to proceed to the next URL. And right after it, let's assume that we got the response and we stored it inside of a response. Now we need to use regex in order to find all of the emails inside of that response. So let's create a variable called new underscore emails to be equal to the set. So it will be a set of re.findall 
and we already know what our e.find all does, we used it before. It will simply just find all the strings with the specified pattern in between the brackets and the pattern will be this. So I will just type it out and you can simply just copy it. Okay, so this is the pattern that we are going to use in order to find all of the emails. Here is the add sign from the email. We are searching for anything before the add sign and anything after the add sign. And now we need to specify where we are searching this pattern in. Well, we want to search it in our response. And how can we get the response printed in text? Well, we can simply specify response.text. And at the end, re.i. Simply just ignoring the case. Close another bracket. And this should manage to find our emails. Now we can update the emails, so use emails.update. And remember, emails is a set that we created at the beginning of the program, which is currently empty. So we're going to update it with the new emails. All right, so now we see that we have some rand underlines right here, which is from the RE library. So let's see why do we get that. Let's go right here and pip3 install RE in case it is not installed. Let me just see right here. Maybe we need to specify double quotes like this. We're going to leave it like that and see what is the error once we run the program. For now on, I can't seem to find it. So no worries. For now on, we managed to create a pattern and we updated our email set with all the emails that we found in this current link that we are scanning. What we want to do in the next video, we want to proceed to the next link and then do this all over again. And at the end of scanning all 100 links, we want to print all of the emails that we found and that we stored inside of this set. Okay? So thank you for watching this lecture and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye. Welcome back. Now that we got our pattern ready for our emails, we need to tell the program right after it scans the first link that it should go to the second link and do that all over up to 100. Okay? So in order to do that, we're going to use the beautiful soup library that we imported. So let's create a beautiful soup object and call it soup. It will be equal to beautiful soup, which we are going to use onto the response.text with the features equal to double quotes lxml. All right. Now for each anchor, so for anchor in soup dot find underscore all, and we are searching for the a tag right now. Entering the for statement, make sure you add two dots, click enter, and now we will specify the link to be equal to anchor.attributes or attrs, and we're searching for the href, because after the href comes the link, and then we're going to use that link in order to process the next scan for our emails. Let's add the if statement, so if that href is already in anchor.attributes, in any other case, we will specify nothing. We also want to check if link dot starts with a slash, then the link will be equal to base URL plus link. Else if link doesn't start, so else if not link starts with, and then we will specify HTTP then the link will be equal to link equals path plus link. And the last if statement will be if not. So if our link is not in URL, so if not link in URLs and not link in scraped URLs, then we want to append that link. So link dot append or pardon me, URLs dot append and the link is what we want to append. So URLs dot append link. Okay, so that should be everything that we need. We have some few red underlines, which I'm not really sure why we do have that. Maybe we need to import beautiful soup like this. Let's use ps4 dot and then beautiful soup. Does that fix the problem? No, it doesn't. So let's delete this. Maybe this is just some bug and that's why it is red underlined. We're going to see once we start the program. But before we do that, we want to add an accept statement because if you remember at the beginning, we had a try statement. So at the end, we need to have accept K 
keyboard interrupt. So in case we want to keyboard interrupt, we're going to print simply just closing. And we are forgetting the most important part that after the execution of this program, we want to print all of the emails. So let's do that. For mail in emails, print the mail and it will print them one by one. So let's give it a try and see whether this program works. If we open up our terminal and type Python 3 email scraper.py, we get syntax error. So we do have some syntax error. Let's see why we have it. Let's go all the way down. And it seems that we are missing one bracket. So let's open it up. Let me just see where do we need to open it. Oh, never mind. This is the mistake. We do not need a bracket right here. So we can remove that. And now let's see whether we have any other errors. No, everything seems to be fixed. So now we can run our program. Python 3 email scraper.py. Enter target URL to scan. I will use this one https slash slash this mass.bg.ac.rs. It will process this URL and it will give us an error. Let's see what it says. Couldn't find a tree builder with the features you requested. Do you need to install a parser library? Hmm. Now, if we get this error, we most likely need to run this command. So pip3 install lxml. Click on enter and this will collect it for you. And right after it, we should no longer have that problem. So let's try it once again. Enter the same URL. It will process the first URL, the second URL, and this will finish after it hits 100 URLs. Right after it, it should print all the emails that it managed to find in the links that it scraped. So I will wait for this to finish and we are going to see the output once it reaches 100. Okay, so our program has finished and we can already see the output of all of the emails. Let me enlarge this terminal so we can see everything. And if I scroll all the way up, you can see all of the emails with the exact same domain name that our program managed to find scanning first 100 links. So you can see there is a lot of them. I'm scrolling all the way up. There is at least like 50 emails that we managed to find. And here is the end of the program where we processed first 100 URLs. So all of these emails were found in these 100 URLs. Okay, so our program works really well. Now you can upgrade it if you want, you can make it scan for first 1000 URLs and you will receive even more results, but there is really no need to that. You can already see how many potential emails we got for further attack. Now keep in mind, this is not a website that I own or that I am allowed to attack. So make sure that you do not use this website in order to further on uh, plan your attack. We just scan this website in order to show how our program works. And for now on, it seems to work really well. Now let's try with a different program as well. So for example, let's see whether we can find something if we scan Google. You know, I never really tried it. So let's try it together. If we type HTTPS www.google.com. Let's try it. It will process first 100 URLs and let's see whether it will manage to find any emails inside of those 100 URLs. Okay, so the program has finished once again, and these are all of the emails that we managed to find from these 100 links. Really cool, right? So now you have a program that can gather all of the emails from a specified domain name, and then you can use them to plan further attack. All right, so that will be about it for this project. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I see you in the next project. Take care, bye.